Alright, achievers, this is what we're here to see today. I think we might end up going home with it. Howard Price Turf Equipment. It's made by Cub Cadet, from what I've been able to research. It's a Howard Price Maverick 620. It's a six wheel or er, a four wheel drive. All four wheels in the back are driven. You can see the chain drive there. It's got a Honda V twin in it. Kind of cool. So let's see if we can get this thing loaded up onto the trailer. Heck yeah. Let's see. No hour meter. Choke stuck. It looks like it's been sitting a long time. Key moves. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get this thing loaded up. Alrighty, got it all loaded up. Flipped it over a little closer. Eh, it's not too bad. Obviously, front tires are gone. Body's in okay shape. There's your weight pedal and your throttle. Feels like it's a mechanical brake. Rear tires are nearly new, but probably will need tubes. I got it all loaded up. Got it strapped down real tight really no perfect strapping points on the front they do with what I got but it's definitely strapped down and go ahead and get the heck out of here looks like I got out of here just in time for the rain sleet snow to start <laughs> uh, yep. alrighty today we've got this now you might be thinking it's a gator like a John Deere Gator. If I can get my focus. There we go. But it is not a John Deere Gator. It is a Howard Price. I think the front end, especially that grill, looks very Ram Dodge. Early 2000s. It's a Maverick. It's a Howard Price Maverick 620. Six wheel drive or four wheel drive, six wheels, so it's a four by six. Pretty neat. Haven't really done anything with it yet, other than putting a little bit of lubricant in the key switch here. Um, looks like headlight switch. This would be for the electric bed lift, but unfortunately, that bed lift is missing gone. There's an hour meter right here that's seen a lot of weather and I'm sure it doesn't work anymore. You've got your forwards and reverse. It's currently sitting in neutral. There's also a unlock and lock right here and I'm not sure what that does. I'm guessing it locks the bed in place. Got your gas tank right here. I think it's dry. It smells really really old. I'm going to guess this guy has been sitting six years, seven years, maybe more. See, I should not be able to lift this. That should be, uh, there should be an electric ram that mounted here and it mounts to right here. That electric ram is missing. I looked online and I can get a new one. Um, just depending on what I end up doing with this, I may or may not get one. The plug's still there for the ram too. So let's see, let's go to the other side to show you what we got sitting in front of us. That's right, we've got a Honda 20 horsepower V twin in this guy. What I ended up paying for this entire thing is a fraction of what that is worth. Let alone 
a full transmission setup as well. It's got forwards and reverse and everything. So, yeah, it's it was a good deal. It was a really good deal. Um, it's rough, but let's see what we can see what we can get out of this guy. Um, I did check the oil in it as well. The oil looks okay. Yeah, oil looks new actually. Doesn't smell too bad. Doesn't smell like there's really much fuel in the. See what we can good. get done with this. We're gonna put a jumper pack on it, um, or even maybe a jumper pack here. Hook it directly and bypass all the cords for now, and see if we can get it to turn over. If we can, see if we can get it to pop over, and if we can, um, maybe get into that carburetor on that and see if we can get it to run well. These rear four tires are nearly brand new. I don't think they were used for very long at all when they were put on the piece of equipment. And it does have an interesting suspension in the rear there. The front tires are completely and utterly shot. As you can see, <laughs> this side's even worse. Surprisingly, they will take air, but they will hold it for a matter of like five to ten minutes, and then they're pretty much flat again. I just just to see if they would hold air. And they did for a minute. Uh, I'm gonna guess that's maybe a dipstick for the transmission, or maybe it's just. Oil goes in. Oh, it feels like a dipstick. It is. Oil looks brand new in that as well. Yeah, it smells like a hypoid gear oil. So, that's looks like it's good too. So, put some stuff over. Got some carburetor cleaner. We're going to hook this directly up to just right here, see if we get anything. I just want to bypass all the elect electrical wires for right now, just in case there's an issue. Did you hear a spark or something? Turn this guy on. Alright, let's go ahead and turn the key and see what happens. There's definitely... Yeah. That is good. Pop the filter off here. Hopefully it has one. Yeah. Now it's got a pre-filter as well. I don't know why, but a lot of guys will take a dirty filter off of something. Because it's choking the engine out. And then you use it that way and leave it that way. <laughs> There's a lot of dirt up in there. I don't think it was ever run with the filter off it. I think it was just left open. That's loose as well. Let's give it a little bit of something. See if it starts for a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil down the intake, just for some extra lubrication. Just because we can. And then some carburetor cleaner. I'm gonna sit down and put some brakes while I try this. Starts and sounds awesome. All right, I finally got the fuel. This fuel line's actually plugged, so I got run on my own. Had a gentleman come and talk to me for a minute, so I just kept working, getting all that nasty fuel out of there. It's uh, pretty gross. <laughs> that is what it looks like. So definitely. Gonna put some fresh fuel in there. 
I found out that these seats pop up. I didn't know that. It's got a fuel gauge on it. There's a fuel shutoff right here as well. Turn that guy on, and there's still no fuel flow. So put a new fuel line on it. Came with a whole bunch of uh, brand new earplugs as well. <laughs> so we're just getting all the fuel pumped out of there. We're going to get some fresh fuel in there. And then uh, make sure it's pumping fresh fuel before we hook it up. All right, so we got the nasty fuel pumped out of there. Got some more gooder fuel pumped in there. It's about a half a gallon, or sorry, half a five gallon can of nasty fuel. I put some B12 chem tool in there. Yeah, look at that fuel. <laughs> I need to drink more water. Anyways. It's just for testing purposes here. Link these guys up like this just to just to see what we can get out of them. Let's turn that electric fuel pump on for a second. I heard it take fuel. I'm gonna go ahead and stop pumping it and we're gonna try to start it now. Yeah, let's try starting it. Sit in the passenger seat here. Holding the brake down. I'll probably set the parking brake. It's in neutral. It's gotta be, it's gotta be in the carburetor. That uh, driver's seat fell and fell on my arm. It felt all sorts of nice. All right, we're gonna need my smaller ratchet, or smaller socket, rather. All right, tubers, let's go ahead and get this carburetor cleaned out here. Now, this is not the first time I've cleaned this carburetor out. Since the last scene and this scene, I have probably cleaned this out three or four times now. I think I've got the issue fixed. Uh, the issue is I was having a lot of dirt come through my fuel system. And it keeps getting just enough dirt in the idle jet, though I have not really well cleaned out that idle jet either. So I'm just going to show you how to clean these out really, really well. As well as replace some O-rings. This O-ring here. If we can focus here. Maybe. Anyways, there you go. That O-ring there needs to be replaced. It's, uh, it's dried out and cracked, so it definitely needs to be replaced. So we're going to look at my O-ring kit here. going to find an O-ring that fits. You can buy these online. 
Uh, you could, they also have a sizer right here to see how thick it is. Looks like it's a 1 and 7 eighths O-ring. I'm going to guess it's probably this guy or the guy next to it. 1 and 7 eighths. Looks to be exactly the same diameter, just slightly smaller, which is okay in this case because that guy is definitely stretched out. So this new o-ring should fit nicely. Yeah, and it does. Focus. Yeah, that o-ring fits absolutely perfect. Sweet. So that guy's all good to go. This guy was gummed up, but I cleaned that out and it works correctly now. That's the anti-dieseling valve. Let's go ahead and pull the bottom of this carburetor off. All right, let's go ahead and pull the bottom of this carb off now. Comes with a little bit of a wiggle and a tug. There we go. Yeah, I'm playing with a new camera, if you can't tell. Really great quality. But it is auto focusing like crazy. So I'm going to turn the manual focus on and have it stop focusing in and out. There's another O ring right here. That also needs to be replaced. I wonder if it's actually not the same exact size. Um, give me one second. All right, so I figured that size out is one size down. So the other O-ring was an F F03 here. The other one was an F02. I think that'll fit quite nicely. The other one's been completely destroyed and marred, so <laughs> I'm not, I can't size off of that. I'm going to go ahead and take these jets out. And I have a hard time getting on this specific one, so I'm actually using a pair of pliers to loosen that off. Because it's, it's really, really, really tight on there. There's the jet and it does have dirt and stuff in it already. Once you pull this jet out, you can actually um, press the other parts out. See if we can get you a good shot of what's going on inside. You can see a bit of a sleeve there, or a bit of a step, and then another piece down below. The piece down below will push out, which it already has decided to on its own. Again, taking a pair of pliers to it lightly. That's the emulsifier tube. Every single one of those holes need to be clear. We'll look at that better here in a second. But there is one more piece up inside. That is your idle jet for these carburetors. And that O-ring also needs to be replaced. little holes down here but there's a tiny little jet inside. We're going to take all these jets and toss them into a can of Berryman's carb carb cleaner can dip stuff. This stuff is very strong, works very good and you don't want to leave your carburetors in here for really more than a couple of hours like or an hour. Usually I can toss a bad carburetor in here for about half an hour and it does the job. This stuff will actually strip the metal coating. Like if you have a steel a steel bowl and you leave it in there for a long time and it's coated in a different kind of metal, it will actually strip off that other kind of metal if you leave it in here for too long. Toss those guys in there. focus in a little bit more for you. Pop the o-ring off this guy. Uh, 
I'll pop that o-ring off uh, off camera and then we're gonna toss that guy in the bucket as well and we're gonna get and continue just cleaning out what we can and the rest of the carburetor while we wait, wait for these to soak all right let's get on to cleaning this guy out just gonna pull the Go ahead and go back to autofocus here. See if it can focus well enough. Like I said, still getting used to the camera. <laughs> I'm going to spray out in here. There is no uh, rubber o rings down in here. It is a rubber needle. The needle actually has rubber on the end of it, so you definitely don't want to spray that with any sort of carb cleaner but I'm hoping I can find some trapped dirt in and through here. So if I spray it out, I can maybe get something out of there. Well, I think that's about as clean as it's gonna get. I'm gonna spray the, the whole carb off real quick. Just so I can get any amount of dirt out of there. I think I've got it on automatic focus, but also automatic. Uh, let's see, let's change that. There we go. Like I said, guys, I'm still getting used to this camera. It's going to take some time. trying to get as much dirt off as I can so I don't track any dirt back into the carburetor. Okay, that's clean. Pull the bottom of the carb off here. You can see, if you can see, there's a lot of dirt down in there. It wouldn't be able to see unless I had a little flashlight. So I might just have to buy and have here. Oh, you know what? My keys have a little flashlight on them. Carefully peel that guy off. Let's see. I don't have my keys on me. I'll be right back. Alrighty. We can autofocus into that. You can see all the dirt down in there. So I'm gonna get all that clean. I'm gonna dump this whole thing in that carb cleaner and really let it go to town down inside there. Make sure it gets very clean. Hope you guys are liking the quality of this video camera. It took a long time to, to pick the right one. All right, that's soaking. Well, while that all is soaking, I will tell you about something real quick. For those of you who are currently watching and not skipping through my video, a bit of a heads up for you guys. I'm gonna be having a giveaway soon. It's coming up probably in about a month from now. I'll be releasing a video of how to enter uh, what the rules are. The reason I bring that up is this might be one of the giveaways. This will be like maybe third place, second place, third place, something like that. They're not cheap. They're made by uh, Streamlight. Streamlight's a really good company. It's a very, very bright little flashlight. It doesn't look like a lot, but at night, holy smokes, that thing is brighter than one of my bigger flashlights. So. That is one of the giveaway uh, one of the giveaway items, but yeah, I really hope you guys stay tuned and are subscribed because I will be doing giveaway videos, giveaways in the near future and continuing on. So definitely stay tuned. We'll come back when this guy is done doing its magic. All right, so we've had the parts soaking in our chemical here for almost exactly 24 hours. <laughs> that is about as long as you want to leave anything in there. Anything more than that and you'll start uh, 
like degrading the metal and stuff. It's really strange. You leave it stuff in there for long enough and it really starts changing things. I'm just gonna tilt you guys up a little bit here. Here we go. Spray everything off as it comes out. Really should be wearing gloves working with this stuff. I don't know where my gloves are right now, so. It definitely cleaned out all the dirt. That was down at the bottom. All that dirt. I'd say 98% of that dirt's gone. Let's see. I'm going to clean this off camera for a second. All right, that guy's all cleaned out. It's good to go. Now I just need to pull the jets out and clean them off. I'm just going to take them and throw them here on the towel. This bucket is old. I've got a brand new bucket somewhere, but I'm not sure where it is. So I continue to use this one that I've been using for so many years. I have cleaned countless amount of carburetors in this thing. And it's honestly past its life expectancy. And the fluid in it is actually sticky from the varnish from all the carburetors. But huh, I'm still using it, and it does still work. Maybe not as, as strong as it used to, but it does still work. All right. So we're gonna just make sure all these are all clean. Just moved out of the way. There's still dirt on the outside of this, but it really doesn't matter too much. To me. I'll make sure it's all clean though. Um, you can hear it spray through each one of these little orifices. Um, there's tiny, tiny little holes. You can see that there. Yeah, you can see them right there. Tons of tiny little holes and every single one of these have to be clean. Just make sure they all flow. These, these jets, after being in that chemical, look brand new. Looks, that looks great. Drop that guy down in there. No, no, we can't. Idle jet still needs to go in there. And the idle jet's the one that we have issues with. Let's see if we can spray through it. Yeah, we can spray through it. So really all we can do with this jet. It's so small that you can't get anything in it. Let's see, let's try some steel wool. See if I can make the steel wool small enough. Kind of sharpen it down into a point there. We'll run it down inside. Try to clean as much as we can. It's just hard to clean this jet because it's the jet sits like right there. Like right inside here and it plugs easy and it's hard to clean. But we're giving it our best chance here cleaning it out with that chemical. Making sure everything and I do mean everything is dissolved out of that. So, comfortably say that's clean. This guy, we're just going to spray out. That's your main jet and it's clean. You can kind of see that, that pinkish color. Hello, focus. Focus in, hello. Can you focus please? You will focus, I will focus you. Focus. There we go. You kind of see that pinkish color. So what starts happening when you leave jets in there for too long. It does weird stuff.
All right, let's go ahead and start putting it back together. I did not find a new O-ring for this guy, so we're gonna reuse that old and yes, torn O-ring. We're just gonna put it back into place because that is the only thing I've got for it. Gonna dunk it in some Marvel Mist oil for reassembly. And put it back into place. Making sure it's seated, it's seated all the way down. Yeah, it's all the way down now. So that guy's in there. And this guy's next. It's nice and clean. Gotta get just right. There we go. This guy on top. Again, I'm just going to use a pair of pliers to tighten this one up. I don't normally do this, but it works on this carburetor. A little bit of dirt on this. Alright, then we're going to put the new, this new O-ring on. This O-ring is really for the anti-dieseling valve. Um, if the anti-dieseling valve wasn't being used, um, you could really just go without even putting that guy on there. Doesn't, wouldn't need it. Again, Marvel Mist Oil for reassembly. I'm gonna just inspect this guy. There's a little bit of dirt down in, down in that corner. I'm going to take a second and really make sure that that's clean because I don't want to pull this carburetor apart again. All right, satisfied with that. It is nice and clean down inside there. So we're going to put some Marvel down inside here to help with that O-ring slipping into place. Put this guy back together. So I'm going to put a new fuel pump on it too because I'm wondering if that fuel pump on that engine is not harboring a lot of dirt. So I bought another uh, new one. The new one was like 13 bucks. I can put a link down in the description. Uh, if it's not there, I have forgotten. <laughs> but uh, I will definitely try to put a link in the description to the fuel pump that that uses. It's a very, very common fuel pump that a lot of different pieces of equipment use, Honda or not. All right, I think that's everything. Uh, yeah. This guy. And I always put a little bit of Marvel on these seals for the heck of it. Let me bring you over a little bit. soak into the rubber and maybe make it last that little bit longer. Never know. Been doing this for years. And I will continue to do so. Alright. This guy goes back together with a push and a twist. Get that O-ring to seat. a bugger to get to seat. It feels like it is though. Yep. Alright. Screw all the screws back down here. Pushing down while I'm really snugging these guys down. Turn that fan towards me. It's into the hundreds today. It's getting warm. Push them down as I'm twisting. Make sure they're tight and to not strip, strip out the screws. All right, that guy's put back together. We need to put this guy back in with its new O-ring. It's the anti-dieseling valve. Again, I'm going to put a little marvel on that O-ring. It's my favorite stuff. Yeah, that 
new o-ring feels great it's actually making it stand up a little bit like it won't go all the way down and that's because the o-ring's not smashed anymore <laughs> so this is going to seal really well the old one was actually still sealing um, how I'm not sure but it is definitely going to get replaced and it has been that new o-ring feels great though Satisfactorily tight. I did put a little marble on this uh, paper gasket too. I think it all started back when I was working on my toy to pick up. And the gasket instructions on that, it was a paper gasket like this, said to um, soak the, the gasket in oil before putting it together. <laughs> I think it's probably where it started. And I've just continued to do so, whether it's paper or cork. Well, I don't want to do it with cork. Paper or rubber. So, let's go slap that guy back in there and see if it will finally idle happily. It does and then it doesn't, and then it does and then it doesn't. So, <laughs> so hopefully it idles happily, it stays idling happily. Alrighty, my battery is getting low, so if it dies, I will have to swap it out. But what we're gonna do is install that carburetor now. I need a 10 millimeter. It's always the 10 mil. Sorry if you hear any fan noises. I've got a fan on me. It's pretty sure I said that earlier. It's a, it's a hot one today. All right. I'm going to go ahead and replace the fuel pump first. Because that fuel pump, again, like I said before, is probably harboring dirt. That sits like that. Pulse line goes to the top one. Like that. Where'd the fuel, there it is, fuel line. Let's see, old pump. This one's got at least the letter for the pulse pump, for P, pulse. I'm just double checking, making sure I've got this set up correctly. So that's gonna be fuel out here. That's gonna be fuel in. So the one next to the fuel, or the pulse, line is for fuel in so like so and that is going to be for fuel out just like so now it's just a matter of putting it back together putting that carburetor back on it for the last time, I'm going to say it for the last time. <laughs> I did not want to take it off again. Go away! No one needs your friend. Go away. Ah. I wanted to. I wanted to say hello, and I did not want to, to say hello. I really don't like wasps. Have I said that already? Ah. And they make homes like mad over here. You leave. This has been sitting here for a week, a week and a half, something like that, and there's nests all over it, I'm sure, or they're at least trying to make nests all over it. The mower behind you guys, that's going to be coming up, coming up in a video soon, that has nests all over it. I cleared them out while I was working on it. I haven't worked on it for yeah, about a month now. Our nests all over it again. Put the overflow on the bottom of the carburetor. Make sure ah, I get away from my face. Seriously, they just keep flying in and checking me out. I 
I want to make sure you kind of prematurely run all your linkages because I've done that before putting it all together and I had to take it all back apart because of the linkages. Got to make sure this guy goes on the right way around. There's a little tab on this. Tab on that, they match. Go like that. Yeah. It's like the carburetors aren't quite designed to be perfectly straight, so they put these little adapter plates in to make them line up. Just making sure that's right. Yeah, that looks right. Gonna run the fuel line before we put it all together. It's easiest right now to put it on. All right. Slide this guy down into place. Being careful not to tear any of the gaskets. I have reused these gaskets many times now. They still seal just perfectly. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and go for a start now. I'm gonna have to reach over and manually choke it. And I just realized that this seat is wet and now my butt is wet. My tuchus is wet. Really hoping that fuel pump that I bought is good. It should be, but never know. Never know what you're gonna get when it's not from manufacturer. That's not pumping anything. I really hate to say it, but we might have to put that old fuel pump back on. So let's go ahead and put the old fuel pump back on. <laughs> Unless I figure something out off camera. Um, but we'll probably end up just putting that old fuel pump back on and calling it good. Be back in a minute. Um, let me uh, let me let me just open this first real quick. You know. Um, and uh, turn this little red switch on that's sitting on the gas tank, and just uh, and just shut that. Let's uh, pretend that ever happened. All right, let's go for the first start after cleaning that <laughs> that carburetor. <laughs> I forgot to flip and turn the fuel on, guys. Oh my gosh, it'll probably pump now. Oh look at that! I can see the fuel moving in the fuel filter now. Go figure, right? Uh. Oh yeah, it's pumping nice and strong. Doesn't quite want to stay idling, but that could be an idle adjustment now. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna pop this guy off real quick. That's your idle adjustment right there. So we're gonna go ahead and just turn it one full turn just to start us out to see if that does anything. Brake, so it's in 
now it's not moving. guys changed out these front tires are shot <laughs> that is not gonna fit there so we're gonna have to use the front bumper to jack up on I think yeah these tires are there's big old cracks in them See. everywhere there's one of the cracks and they're just everywhere they're on the sidewalls the other tires actually worse but I'm gonna get these guys off and get them over to the tire place and go get them changed I'd change it myself, but I always have a hard time breaking the beads on these things. I don't have a tool in which to break the beads just yet. Yeah, look at that big old crack right there. They don't. They this one will hold air for <laughs> about 10 minutes, and it goes flat. Uh, how it even holds air in the first place, I'm not sure, but. The new tires should be real nice. They're pretty aggressive. So, get these guys slid off. And get them in. Get them changed. Looks like that's all in pretty good shape. Sweet. Out with the old and in with the new. Look at those guys. I like them. Pretty deep tread. Yeah. These should be a lot better. Let's go ahead and get these guys on. All right, those things look awesome. These are uh, tires made by Journey. Eh, just some off-brand the nicest but cheapest that I could get. There's a couple other brands that I found that were a little cheaper, but I like the, the design of these guys. Kind of closely resembles the back tires. To some extent. I mean, this, the middle lines, but I really like those. They're a lot taller than the last tires, which I was kind of hoping for. They actually fill out the uh, wheel wells a little bit. But those, those are nice. I like them. Got to uh, pick these guys up off of uh, rockauto.com. They did send me some older, older tires, but they were on sale. That's what I found with Simple Tire is uh, if they're having a big sale, they'll usually send you the oldest stock that they have. These it looks like were made in 2014, if that uh, if that's correct. 13, 14, 13 week of 2014. So they've definitely got a couple years on them, but they're brand brand new. I didn't pay all that much for them. So sweet, I like it, guys. It's gonna be nice to be able to actually use this thing instead of having to air up the tires every time I want to use it. Awesome. Well, next up, I think we're going to be working on the bed.
Heck yeah. Idling like it should. Happy with that. I think that's it today, guys. I don't really have much more for you on this guy for now. Um, I will be trying to fix the lift bed. That's supposed to lift itself up. I did buy one electric arm for it that I might put in that video, but it didn't work, so I ended up returning it and ordering another one. So we'll see what we can do. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching to the end. Uh, again, I'd like to let you guys know that we are going to be doing some giveaways. So please stay tuned for that. Uh, we're getting to the end of the videos. I try to put something in here for you guys to tell you about them. But yeah, we got uh, giveaways coming up. And more videos coming out on this sooner or later. But for right now, it's just going to get put to work and help me around here. So thank you so much for watching to the end. Make sure to check out the description for links. Uh, I've got Instagram and stuff like that on there too. Kind of behind the scenes sneak peeks and stuff going on. So hope you guys have a good one. See ya. Bye.